you are the world's worst marriage guidance counselor. What advice do you give? In every marriage there is what I like to call the conservation of happiness. Happiness can neither be created nor destroyed, only transferred from one person to the other. As such it's important to get as much happiness as you can while giving as little as possible. Generosity is death in relationships. All the good things in life are commodities. We trade love just as we buy and sell stock. We engage in human relationships when there is a fair exchange of value. Support, motivation, affection, nothing good is ever free. If every physical good in the Federation came from a single supplier it would constitute a dangerous monopoly. Personal relationships are the same, it is important for people to get what they need from multiple sources. If a person finds a better source of the goods they require, they are not wronging their original supplier by changing their purchasing arrangements. If one member of a relationship should feel threatened or jealous, they must look at their own business model and ask whether it is performing competitively. There is always room for improvement. Responsible Autonomous Relationships by Jenny Eklund I'm not even kidding when I say this. Indian marriages are based on this. Typical Indian marriages, called arranged marriages involve bringing in potential partners by looking into their stars and astrology and other stuff and if compatible and if they like each other they get married. Obviously everything you try to do with your partner can feel oppressive. So when the marriage stagnates, the elders usually say this, have a kid. It fixes everything. It'll being you guys closer and maybe you'll see that connection then. I pity the kid that is a direct result of an unhappy marriage and not a product of love. I know you meant that as a joke but I also want to point out that sometimes arguing is not a sign of a problem. When you are arguing you are actually communicating. How you resolve the arguments is also important but the fact that couples argue is not a bad thing. Source, couples therapist because we were worried that our arguing was a sign of trouble but apparently it's not a bad thing. It's far far worse to never argue when there are issues. If you truly have a deep connection, your partner will be able to tell exactly what is bothering you and anticipate your needs without you expressing them. You should work on your nonverbal cues so they can better interpret and react to your state of mind. If they aren't able to do this successfully, you should explain to them every clue they missed and everything they did wrong so they can improve for the next time. It's very important to win arguments, so make sure to fight with everything you have, and don't be afraid to fight dirty. Call names and hurl insults. Show massive disdain for your partner slash adversary and refuse to back down, especially if your spouse tries to walk away from the fight. After all, it's personal, and if your spouse says something that hurts you, it means hurting you was their goal, no matter the circumstances. Always remember that you two are on opposite sides, and that you are alone in this. Also don't get lost in the weeds, Remember that whatever started the argument is what the fight is really about. After you fight, try giving your spouse the silent treatment for hours, or even days, as a cooling off period. Once you start talking again, the best way to move on is to never ever bring it up again and pretend it never happened. Getting to the root of why something made you or your spouse angry is a can of worms not worth opening, so don't bother. Tell her she's wrong when you know you're right. Point out when she's thinking irrationally. Just leave without her every time she's late getting ready. Tell her to just calm down any time she gets worked up or upset. Remind her she's supposed to have dinner ready for you as soon as you get home and is supposed to keep the children quiet while you eat and then relax afterward. Tell him it's perfectly okay to compare his wife to supermodels. Tell him you'd like him to stay after the session but his wife can leave, you have something else to talk about. Tell him it's okay to stay out late and ignore his wife and kids. Tell her it's her job to satisfy him whenever and however it. My parents were on the brink of divorce, my dad had a midlife crisis where he thought he needed to buy a motorcycle, be a bachelor and travel, 
and they went to see a couple's therapist. About 20 minutes into the session the lady starts saying there is no way your relationship survives, you need to give up on this. That stupid lady just about broke my mom's heart all over again. A month later my mom gets the courage to say one last try. I booked a one-week couples therapy retreat. It saved their marriage. It's nearly a decade later and their love and marriage is stronger than it has ever been. Anyways, that spiteful and hateful little woman on a therapist who just went on and on about how my mother wasn't woman enough for my dad, whatever she said is the answer to this is credit. You must stay married for the kids sake, no matter how bad things get. Even if it means you need to secretly sleep around to be happy, don't ever divorce at least until the kids are 18. Or better, until they are out of college. Or maybe after the or first post-college job starts. It doesn't matter if the kids see you fight and dislike each other all the time. It would be way worse for them if you divorced. Plus, kids bounce back. They will know you still love each other even if you don't ever show it. You don't want to model that marriages are just something you can give up on, right? Kids must have a two-parent only, single household with a mom and a dad, or else they grow up to have mental issues and poor morality from having a bad example set for them. Kids from divorced homes all turn out to be degenerates. Tell her she's wrong when you know you're right. Point out when she's thinking irrationally. Just leave without her every time she's late getting ready. Tell her to just calm down any time she gets worked up or upset. Remind her she's supposed to have dinner ready for you as soon as you get home and is supposed to keep the children quiet while you eat and then relax afterward. Tell him it's perfectly okay to compare his wife to supermodels. Tell him you'd like him to stay after the session but his wife can leave, you have something else to talk about. Tell him it's okay to stay out late and ignore his wife and kids. Tell her it's her job to satisfy him whenever and however it takes. My grandfather received advice from that exact marriage counselor. This was in the late 50s or thereabouts, they had been married something like 20 years, had their two kids already. My grandmother was always hot-tempered, even to the point of being violent. Her outbursts were aimed at my grandfather and mother, my uncle was largely left alone, the running joke being because my mother was the favorite, and he didn't warrant the same level of attention. Over time, this had gotten worse, maybe menopause related, but back then, medical science was at the dame's, amateur stage. Despairing of other options, my grandfather, then a devout Catholic, went to a church-run camp of some sorts for men with troubled marriages. It was run by priests, who, of course, are the ideal fonts of marital advice slash s. My grandfather described his delicate situation to a particularly old priest. He said, the Bible states the man has dominion over the household as God has dominion over the earth. This is the proper order of things. If your wife will not obey you, you must take whatever means necessary to restore that order. I have found that for some women, there is no resort but to put her over your knee and spank her. Now, my grandfather had many noble characteristics, but made multiple missteps understanding the minds of women. This was a subset of a general lack of empathy. He was not mean-spirited, he simply couldn't grasp that other people had different mindsets and principles than him. As such, Something like the golden rule could be problematic, because he might do something like buy a vacuum cleaner for his wife for Christmas, that was not a hypothetical example. Where he would love a high-end and complex but practical device, he couldn't understand his wife wanted a more personal gift, rather than a household tool. I mention the above, because even with his blurry grasp of interpersonal relationships, he immediately recognized this morsel of wisdom as idiotically ridiculous. As such, he mentally checked out for the remainder of the retreat. When he got home, he could barely wait to tell my grandmother of this absurd exchange, which he did, laughing throughout. Once finished, he burbled can you imagine such a thing? And roared with laughter. My grandmother, however, 
listened quietly and without reaction. He waited for her response, and she eventually said, he's right. You could spank me. Reeling, utterly flummoxed, he incredulously replied with something clever like what? She reiterated, you could spank me. You're a man, you're bigger than me, you're stronger than me, you have an athletic background that I do not. If you wanted to put me over your knee and spank me, I couldn't stop you. She left him to process the veracity of that logic for a couple seconds, then continued, but then you could never, ever, go to sleep. Completely let yourself go both mentally and physically. Stop doing anything that contributed to self-improvement. Stop brushing your teeth regularly and wear the equivalent of a burlap sack when going outside. If your partner suggests taking care of yourself because it went past I'm no longer attracted to you to diabetes might take your foot this year territory, flip out. Insist that you have no obligation to them and if they don't like it, they know where the door is. If your wife is unwilling to perform her wife duties, set up a nice dinner table, order a chef. After dinner, welcome the very beautiful escort that you've ordered. At this point your wife might get a little angry, ignore her. Proceed with the escort and do your absolute best. Ignore your wife or let her watch but do not let her join. This is for you wife to learn about what makes a good woman. When you're done, let the escort leave and tell her, calmly, that is what happens when she doesn't does her wife duties. Listen sometimes it is healthier to blow some steam away from home. It is okay to do that whenever you feel that communication between the two of you is failing. Go out, chat with other people and look for someone who is willing to copulate with you. That will help you blow some steam off and all leave behind all that negative energy. If this option doesn't make you feel quite comfortable with yourself, you may consider paying the other person so it doesn't feel like you are cheating on your spouse but more like a mere transaction. Similar to going to the supermarket and pay for a loaf of bread, right? So go out, try to mingle and blow some steam and come back home feeling renewed and refreshed. Your partner will appreciate the effort you put on this because you're not taking it in him slash her but actually on a stranger who may or may not be paid to deal with the angry version of you. Fighting is an important part of any disagreement. Make sure you use weapons, if possible. A few bruises and some blood will make everyone feel better. Communication causes problems, but only when it is done peacefully. Screaming is encouraged, especially when it involves secrets and private grudges. Kids are the best part of any relationship, and will solve all your problems. You should have as many as possible, and make sure to use them as pawns in your fighting, so they feel included. Talk about your problems, and your partner's flaws with your friends, they're your best source of good advice. The only thing that matters is you. Don't worry about what your partner thinks or feels. If you have an opinion express it over theirs. Always talk over or for your so whatever they have to say really doesn't matter. Always be self-absorbed and an attention whore begging to be the center of attention. Never really solve a problem with your so just threaten to go find someone else. Don't really put any effort in at home just run off with the boys or the girls or your ex. Be sure to be gone more without saying anything the so knows you will show up in a couple days. Be controlling and act like you don't trust your so be sure to use the plethora of apps to do so. After the apps question every move and then take off with friends partying or on a trip. Affairs. They are great for releasing sexual frustration. You won't be angry with each other about lack of action. Make sure you both have a secret bank account. So you can splurge on yourself. What the other doesn't know, won't hurt them. Having arguments. Have an impromptu boxing match clears the air and any bad blood. Drink. A lot. Alcohol makes anything better. Still having issues? Have a kid or two. Those things instantly fix a relationship. Anyway, I'm afraid our time is now up. You can pay me in cash. 
Me and the tax man have different viewpoints on how my income is distributed. When in private, judge and criticize everything your partner does. Make sure your criticism is inconsistent, unclear, and confusing. Contradict yourself from one day to the next. But also make sure that the criticism is harsh, personal, and nasty. If you don't do this your partner will become comfortable with who they are, and that makes them a threat to you and your superiority slash supremacy in the relationship. You must keep the upper hand at all costs. A relationship of equals will never last. When in public, praise your partner and treat them with respect and like an equal. It is important to keep up the charade, lest your partner garner the sympathy and support of others. Respect your partner's privacy. Show your love daily, remind them how you feel about them, what makes them special, how much you appreciate something they did, etc., not about gifts, about recognition for why you're still with them. When you're wrong say so, I'm sorry, I was wrong. Can have real impact when said sincerely. Give each other space. Autonomy is important. You're both individuals, not extensions of one another. Finally, spend time alone together and unplugged. Reminisce. Laugh. Rekindle the spark as often as you can. I would look through the most popular dating and slash or relationship subreddits, maybe AITA to change things up, and say whatever seems the most relevant. He spends all his time working and not as much with me. He's cheating on you. Get a divorce. Find a better man and make your soon-to-be ex jealous. I have to work long hours to pay off my car loan but my husband wants me to take less hours. He's gaslighting you. Get a divorce. Don't just burn that bridge. Decimate it and the surrounding area. If I marry a divorce attorney, I can probably make both of us very rich. It's best if I see you each individually for a session or two. During those sessions, interview them extensively about their sex lives, and if at all possible have sex with each, I can tell you have a lot of built up sexual tension and frustration. Am I right? Etc. At the next joint session, hand them both two detailed scorecards on their individual performances and advise them, over the screaming and recriminations, to try harder and to come back for an evaluation when they think they've improved. An influential 2002 study by Matsuoka ETAL has demonstrated that, rather than the multiple independent domestications model, all maize arose from a single domestication in southern Mexico about 9,000 years ago. The study also demonstrated that the oldest surviving maize types are those of the Mexican highlands. Later, maize spread from this region over the Americas along two major paths. This is consistent with a model based on the archaeological record suggesting that maize diversified in the highlands of Mexico before spreading to the lowlands. Tully from a marriage counselor who we quickly stopped seeing. There is no room to express anger within a marriage. Ask to clarify, you mean we need to find healthy, kind ways to express our anger? No, you cannot be angry with each other in your relationship. This woman boasts that she's practiced for decades. She has a doctorate. She also insisted that we aren't allowed to express what our partner does that we don't like, we are only allowed to express how we feel in that moment, minus anger I guess. At least she helped us agree on something. We found a new counselor. This woman was daft. You're going to want to keep score of how much better you are at marriage than your spouse. Keep a list of all the things they don't do well. The most crucial part of all of this is that you really need to downplay all of their strengths, ignore the things they do well, and make a very big deal of all you do for the marriage. Other small tips that will help this endeavor. Don't ever consider that there are things your spouse does that you never see. Don't show any appreciation towards them. They need to know they are inferior to you. Forget graduating college or even high school. Get married and take on minimum wage jobs. Whenever you have a disagreement, have a kid to make things better. Oh, 
Tell your friends and neighbors about all the fights you have. Try to make them pick sides. Invite your mom to move in and tell her everything you hate about your mate. Buy the most expensive car you can take out many credit cards. If you're having trouble, drink alcohol and smoke cigarettes to feel better. Stay away from church or marriage counseling. Watch Dr. Phil and no matter what the subject of the show, repeat everything Dr. Phil says like it's gospel. Cheat on your mate to keep your self-esteem at a high level. Apply to get on Mori and Springer because that always helps.